The Amazon Fire Stick is one of the cheapest streaming devices, and the reason for that is Amazon wants you to use their products and services. But what that does for the hacking community is it offers some really, really cheap computing devices that you can hack and add games to and add all sorts of other things to. And in this tutorial, this is a series of three, I want to show you the final way that you can set up for emulation this Fire Stick through your network using FTP. Now you are limited by the internal storage of the device in this method, but it is one of the easier methods. And if you just want a few games, this is absolutely a great way to proceed. So let's go ahead and do it. Go ahead and boot up your Fire Stick and get connected to the Wi-Fi. It might also update your Fire Stick to the latest software. Just go ahead and let it run all those updates. So go ahead and go to the home screen, go to apps, go to categories, scroll all the way down to the bottom to utilities, and we're going to want this uh, file explorer software. And as long as you're connected to the internet, it is free. There is a uh, premium version. You don't need it. Just go ahead and click this. I've already installed it, but yours should say get G-E-T. Just go ahead and get it. And then we're going to go ahead and open it. And then on the far left side, there's a menu. There's a menu. So just scroll all the way down the network until it says hook up to a PC, and that's where you'll find your IP address. So at this point, it should give you your IP address, and you can just go ahead and do that on your computer. So I use FireZilla, but you can use any FTP program. Try Quick Connect. I think it's a two one, didn't it? Three seven two one. And there it is. Look at that. And so we can then go to, for example, this one, I have some Game Boy Advance games. I can go ahead and transfer these games over to my downloader directory and I'm done. And now they're on my, my uh, Amazon Fire Stick that easily. Back to our Fire Stick, we do another, another app. Search for the downloader app. So we just hold down our microphone key, downloader app release that microphone there it is go ahead and select that and here's our downloader click that and then we're going to go ahead and i already installed it but there should be a get button press get and there it is then go ahead and open the app like we have it here and head on over to the search menu here now here remember i have my controller set up as well but you got to type this out calm go that should load up the browser here Go ahead and use your analog stick or your D-pad to scroll down. You want to get down to download, get retro arch. Go ahead and click in with A. Scroll down until you get to download. We've got Windows 7, Windows 7, Windows ME, Windows 98, Raspberry Pi, Android. Here we go. Let's go ahead and click download. And now we're downloading it. It's asking if you want to install, we're saying yes. So we need to go ahead and go to our settings and turn on that we're okay with this program installing them. All right, so we just turn it on and go back, back. Now we go back to install. Should work this time. Go ahead, and install. All right, it's ready to install, so we'll hit done. We'll go back. Setting up your controller is fairly simple. Just go ahead and on the main screen here, we're going to go over to settings, go down, game controllers, and uh, add what does you want to add? We want to add a gaming controller, add new controller. There it is, pro controller, select it. It's now pairing to the controller, and now I am connected ready to launch okay go ahead and let it allow to get into your storage devices and everything and the first thing you want to do is just set up your controls we already configured our controller it should be working for the most part but if you head over to controls you can set up your hotkeys and your menu and everything else so that's really easy just under settings there and then input the second thing we're going to do is just install some cores. The cores are the actual individual emulators. So you need different cores depending on what systems you're going to play. So once you set your controls, you want to go ahead and go to the online updater here. And what that'll allow you to do is download cores. And for example, if you're going to be doing arcade games, there's a bunch of arcade cores you can get depending on which ROMs you're using. If you want to play Atari Lynx, you know, the original Atari systems, 
But for the most part, you guys are going to want to play like Nintendo and, and, and Sega. So you just scroll all the way down. So, uh, for example, uh, Game Boy Advance MGBA is a good one to get. I went ahead and already got that. The NES FCEU is good for NES and Famicom games. Uh, Nintendo 64 Parallel is probably going to be your best bet, but you might want to try MuPin 64 Plus. And then um, we're going to be playing some uh, Super Nintendo. My favorite is actually the SNES 9X. And then as far as the Sega, I use Pico Drive a lot, but the Genesis Plus GX is also really good. Now, mind you, there's other cores on here, so basically you just want to download each core depending on how many systems you want to play and just install those cores. When you're done installing, just go ahead and go back, back, back. Computer, or you can just go ahead and load the individual games. So content, I put them all in the downloader, and now there you go, I have all my stuff. So, well, I downloaded Zelda, so let's go ahead and do Zelda. Content. All right, so now we got Alien 3. We can launch that with Pico Drive. processor. So there you have it from start to finish. All this stuff is free. Um, you know, as far as the ROMs, just do a Google search. You can find them all over the place. This is my third tutorial on the Fire Stick. There's actually three different methods of hacking. And as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is a decent way. The problem with this way is you're limited by the internal storage of the device, which is, I think, like less than eight gigabytes. So by adding a OTG cable, you do get more space. But I, I do like this method and I like how easy it is to drag and drop things and you can access things, for example, you know, on your server or whatever it is. So you can do other types of content as well. Um, but this cool little thing and, and for how cheap the device is, you know, and, and it's, others have pointed out, it's great portability and uh, overall, you know, a, a, a solid choice for the price. So with all that said, that's what I think. Do remember that it is limited. This is not a fast uh, processor in there. So you're not gonna be able to do a lot of Nintendo 64 and PlayStation games and anything above that. This thing just can't handle that kind of workload. But I am excited about the future and what that holds as far as really cheap devices that are gonna do a lot as far as computing power and streaming. So with all that, that's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.